five first time home buyer mistakes. Let's cover what these are and how to avoid them so you can avoid home buyer remorse or worse. Hi, I'm Charlotte with Thurston County Real Estate Broker. Honestly, whether you're a first time home buyer or you have a purchase under your belt, these five mistakes are the most common I see and perhaps the most detrimental to your purchase. Mistake number one, not checking your credit report. This is gonna be your number one first step. You should be checking all three credit bureaus to see what's going on with your credit report. I myself have had to fix several items on each one. It can be anything from a misspelled name to an incorrect address to someone with a similar name showing up on your account, mixed credit files to accounts with wrong payment history, identity theft, or even being mistakenly reported dead. Yikes. These are all things you need to clear up, not only to make sure that your credit score is the highest it can possibly be, but also to ensure that you can actually get a loan. Mistake number two, not getting pre-approved first or confusing the pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Your next step after reviewing your credit report, but before you start looking at houses, is to get pre-approved. Not pre-qualified, but pre-approved. There is a huge difference between these two. I have a couple of videos on this topic, but the basic difference is that for a pre-approval, the lender has run your credit and validated all of your financial information. You've submitted a ton of documents for them to do this, and then they give you the amount you're pre-approved for. If you start looking at houses first and you find one that you fall in love with, a couple of things can happen. You start going through the pre-approval process with the lender, they run your credit and find that there's this error that's gonna either prevent you from getting pre-approved or maybe that you can get pre-approved, but for a much smaller amount than you were expecting. And now you're no longer eligible to purchase that home that you've fallen in love with. So that's scenario number one. Another scenario is that your credit report is fine, but based on your information, the lender pre-approves you for a lower amount than you were expecting. And you've been looking in the wrong price point this entire time. And vice versa, right? If you get pre-approved for more and you can look at a price point that's a bit higher than you were expecting, awesome. Another scenario is that you find your dream home first. And before you can put in an offer, you start the process to get pre-approved. So you start that pre-approval process with the lender and over the next day or so, while you're getting everything together, the house goes under contract with someone else. Now, if you'd started that pre-approval process prior to looking, you could have put an offer on the house as soon as you saw it and you would be the one under contract. In addition, the pre-approval is what you need to make an offer. Sellers won't entertain offers that don't have this pre-approval, especially in multiple offer situations. Mistake number three, only talking to one lender and getting one mortgage rate quote. I highly recommend you talk to two or three local lenders to get a better idea of the programs that they have that are available to you. Not all lenders have the same programs and you deserve to see which lender has the best option for you. For example, I've seen that some lenders have 0% down payment loans where other lenders do not. Recently, I've seen that some lenders create a 1% down payment program, but again, not all lenders have this. So you need to do some research and have some conversations with a few of these lenders. This can put you in a much better position financially over the long term. Mistake number four, not saving enough money or spending all of your savings. I know that it's hard to save money for that down payment, but there are other expenses that come up during the process, the like inspections and the appraisal as well as closing costs. You also need to have some money in savings after it's all said and done so that you have a buffer in case of emergencies or if any repairs come up. You know, the water heater could die or the dishwasher could die right after closing. So you'll need to make sure that you have money to repair these or replace these. You can get a home warranty that can help with those kind of home repairs or home emergencies, but what about health or job issues? You just need to have that buffer. Mistake number five, not making the right down payment. Make sure you take advantage of the fact that you don't need 20% for a down payment. Now this myth just keeps sticking around no matter how many times I talk about it and every other lender and real estate agent talks about it. It's just a myth. Look, if you put down 20%, that's awesome. And you'll definitely get a good rate. But most first time home buyers are not putting down anywhere close to 20%. Most of the time that 20% is actually from the equity of a previous purchase. And even that scenario, the average is only 14%. So you can see in this chart that most of the time, first time home buyers are putting down 6%. But that's not a hard and fast rule. I've seen a lot of 1% and 0% down loan programs that have come out recently. So make sure you aren't putting down too much or worse, waiting to buy because you don't think that you have enough money for a down. Always, always, always talk to a lender way before you think you need to because you might be able to buy earlier than you thought you could. If you want my home buyer guide, which includes a checklist of all the things you need to get ready to buy a home, click the link in the description below. Okay, there you have it, part one of five in the series, First Time Home Buyer Mistakes. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.